I don't know what's the earliest you've ever started a ride. It's now 5.30 in the morning. This is the second time I am starting a ride this early. I'd love to hear what is the earliest you've ever started a ride and what your experience has been. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. If it is your first time here, my name is Momoya Karaoke and on this channel we talk about motorcycle life and motorcycle travel and of course road safety. Today I'm heading to Old Kalao with a group of amazing other bikers. We are going to plant trees with the students of Tumaini Primary School. We also have some gifts to deliver to them so that's amazing and we target uh, to plant about 5,000 trees and come back home expected return journey is about 350 360 kilometers so today is the first time the royal enfield is getting out for a long ride and i'm excited to just get to know how this bike performs on a long distance ride because i have a couple of others planned the weather is terrible 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 it's so cold it's drizzling um almost raining actually because we are getting wet the roads are wet so i have a few things that i want to look out for today on this ride for this particular bike i want to know how it's going to perform in terms of speed i have only been able to do it up to 80 per um, i mean up to 80 kilometers per hour in nairobi and i want to stretch it out there and see the performance i want to know how the vibration is gonna feel on higher speeds above 80 kilometers per hour i also want to know how it's gonna perform on different um gradients i think that's a correct word yes like in the hills going up climbing up i want to know how it's going to perform because i haven't been able to do um climbs with this bike so i don't know no hills in nairobi city i also want to know how it's going to handle the wind and now that it's wet i also going to see how it's going to handle the wet grounds and the breaking of it i'm used to the gs which has a non-road mode it has a rain mode and it also has abs so definitely different technology from what i'm using on the royal enfield i don't have any of those i also want to know how the seat is gonna feel on a long distance how comfortable that seat is and most importantly this bike is a carburetor bike so i also want to know how the fuel consumption is i haven't been able to measure that because of short distances in nairobi and i fuel because i don't have a fuel gauge i fuel when i feel like we have done some kilometers so yeah those are the things that i'm going to look out for today and i'll share the review with you it's still too early to review this bike fully 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 so we will take it a step at a time i've just told you i have other trips planned so we will have other opportunities to review this bike more for now let's do this ride today come with me the weather is horrible it's cold and let's do this and when i come back to nairobi i'm gonna give you the feedback so guys, first things first, let's go through what I needed to prepare for this bike. This being the very first long distance trip, I needed to make sure that everything is okay with this bike. The first thing is to make sure that you check your toolkit and know that you have everything. Check all the bolts and nuts that you may need, the sizes, and make sure you have the right tools. Most common accidents or most common repairs that happen on the road is you either drop the bike and you have to fix a mirror, you have to fix a clutch cable or clutch handle or brake handle, or the wind and the vibration makes your mirrors so loose and you need it to tighten them. So the toolkit I have that came with the bike, I went through it and added what I needed. From there, it's getting to fit the bag i got a bag because i needed to carry my rain gear i was going to carry a few extra tools and of course my snacks for breakfast this was a very early morning ride so i also fitted that to make sure that it fits well and it's not going to get loose drop on the road you know such things if you look at my seat it's not designed for having a back on it other things that i did is make sure that my tires are okay 
the pressure, the chain. I lubricated the chain. I made sure my controls are good. The bulbs are working. And I have fuel. Definitely. Yes. Now we are all fueling the V power in layer 135. Yeah. So I made sure that everything is okay for this bike before the following day. I also started it to make sure it's running well, the engine is running well, and there's nothing that needs to be done. So after that, it's now the ride. So now let's get into the things that I really needed to see the performance on this bike. You remember in the beginning of this video, I mentioned a list of items that I'm actually looking out for to feel the performance on this bike and of course the first one was the braking system and especially on wet road and we had that all the way to flyover the actually the drizzle or the rain ended up at flyover on your way to nakuru for those who don't know what i'm talking about and then from there it was just very cold but not wet so the brakes performed well i mentioned that i'm used to abs braking system and a switch from B abs to this other system is a little scary because the two braking systems perform differently on my rear brakes on this bike are drum and my front brakes are pads however it performed well i was comfortable i didn't feel any threat i was a bit cautious but all was good on that then now when we hit the flyover we took a road that was less busy it didn't have much traffic it didn't have much traffic so i was able to push the speeds a little from the manual this bike can do up to 113 kilometers per hour i didn't achieve 113 kilometers per hour but i managed to get to 100 and what i wanted to know is the vibration and also how i feel at that speed so one thing is from gear 5 and if you're above 70 the vibration reduces a lot not completely but the vibration reduces you still however got to be uh, ready to get used to shaking mirrors and how to to see like how to detect the traffic behind you and besides you with the shaking mirrors but it was much much less on lower gears and lower speeds it's extremely high uh, the other thing that i really wanted to know about this bike's performance is the seat. At the end of the day, we did about 400 kilometers because me, as Wamoyo, and my map reading, <laughs> I got lost and took a detour with one of the riders. So the seat was very comfortable, extremely comfortable. No monkey butt at all. So I can tell you, if you're looking for a bike with a great seat, <sighs> this Royal Enfield 350 Classic, the seat is amazing. So that was perfectly well. Now let's go to the fuel. Now here I did not keep my records very well, so I should have done better than this. But I left Nairobi with a full tank and we did all the way to Old Kalao School. Uh, I had a detour because I got lost, which I did an extra of almost 50 kilometers. And then of course the detour to lunch and then getting out. I topped up 955 Kenya shillings. And at, on this day, the fuel was retailing at 127 Kenya shillings for petrol. So that makes it about seven and a half uh, liters of petrol. Now, assuming that I did 200 kilometers from Nairobi to all Kalao, including the detour, means that my consumption was about 26 point something, 26 and a half kilometers per liter. Now, the manual says that this bike can actually give you 40 kilometers. So uh, the reason why I'm saying I need to do this again, because that's basically quite low for what the manual tells me. So I will repeat this again. But however, I can say that that wasn't really bad. You can judge for yourself and tell me whether that was bad or not bad. Yeah. So the other thing that I needed to know about this bike was how it's going to perform on climbs like we had a couple of hills to go up and oh my god this bike never went beyond 80 actually 80 was at the beginning it would go down to even 60 depending on how the gradient was so if you're watching this video and you ride a royal enfield please let me know if it is me or it is the bike or what i'm talking about is the truth i'd like to send my 
thank you to Rico the Gearhead for giving me this footage. Most of the footage you've seen towards the end of this, actually after the prepping of the bike, is all courtesy of Rico the Gearhead. Make sure to head to his YouTube and check it out. This guy has amazing videos and amazing discussions and topics on riding motorcycles here in Kenya. Head to his YouTube and please subscribe and watch. Until the next ride for the Royal Enfield, it's bye for now. But I'm looking forward to hear what you think about this bike. And uh, so far, I'm looking for riding mates. I'm the only lady riding a Royal Enfield. So ladies out there, would you like to ride this bike? Come on, I'll share more with you. Also watch these two videos. The first one is where I introduced this bike and the second one is where I am servicing it for the first time and walk the Royal Enfield journey with me.